Good morning. Ah, okay, there we go. Um, it's called The Arbital of Magic, The Magic of the Ancients. And the first English edition was in 1655. So this is really cool. And I read, last night, I read uh, the first few pages and I wanted to share it with you. The first tome of the book of Arbital of Magic is called Isagog. And I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing these things right, but um, this is just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful words, like very high level thinking, um, very deep esoteric meanings that I, that I'm rereading over and over again to really get the messages. And, um, it's really great. So in the name of the creator of all things, both visible and invisible, who reveals his mysteries out of his treasures to them that call upon him and fatherly and mercifully bestows those his secrets upon us without measure. May he grant unto us through his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, his ministering spirits, the revealers of his secrets, that we may write this book of Arbital concerning the greatest secrets which are lawful for man to know and to use them without offense unto God. Amen. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is some good stuff, right? So the first septen septenary of aphorisms, and these are amazing. So afro so those of you that are just joining in, I ordered this 37-page little book of ancient treasures, um, and it talk it's very deep, esoteric stuff. It's really beautiful. So I'm going to go through the first seven of the aphorisms in this book. So the first aphorism says, Whosoever knows would know secrets, let him know how to keep secret things secretly and to reveal those things that are to be revealed and to seal those things which are to be sealed, not to give holy things to dogs nor cast pearls before swine. Observe this law and the eyes of thy shall understand and, and the eyes of thy understanding shall be opened to understand secret things. And thou shalt have whatsoever thy mind desire to divinely reveal unto thee. Talks about seeing, you know. Thou shalt have also the angels and spirits of God prompt and ready in their nature to minister unto thee. As, many, as much as many human mind, can, humane mind can desire. I'm going to read that last one. Thou shalt also have the angels and spirits of God prompt and ready in their nature to minister unto thee as much as any humane mind can desire. Your channel is waiting and listening for you, is what that means. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, so this is aphorism two. In all things, call upon the name of the Lord, and without prayer unto God through his only begotten Son, do not thou undertake to do or think anything. Use the spirits given and attribute unto thee as ministers, without rashness and presumption as the messengers of God having a due reverence toward the Lord of Spirits, and the remainder of thy life do thou accomplish, demeaning thyself peacefully to the honor of God and the profit of thyself and thy neighbor. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Aphorism number three. Live to thyself and the muses. Avoid the friendship of the multitude. Be thou covetous of time, beneficial to all men. Use thy gifts, be vigilant to thy calling, and let the word of God never depart from thy mouth. <laughs> Aphorism number four. Be, obedi uh, be obedient, obedient to good ad uh, admon admonitions. I don't really know how to say that word admonitions avoid all procrastination accustom thyself to consistency and gravity 
both in thy words and deeds. Resist temptations of the tempter by the word of God. Flee from earthly things. Seek after heavenly things. Put no confidence in thy own wisdom, but look unto God in all things. According to that sentence of the scripture, when we know not what we shall do unto thee, O God, do we lift up our eyes, and from thee we expect our help. For all, for where all humane refugees do forsake us, there will be the help of God shine forth, according to the saying in Philo. <laughs> okay, this one's great. Number five. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. And the Lord will keep thee as the apple of his eye, and will deliver thee from all evil, and will replenish thee with all good. And nothing shall thy soul desire, but thou shalt be fully endued therewith, so that it be contingent to the salvation of thy soul and body. <sighs> like, yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Number six. Whatsoever thou hast learned, frequency repeat, frequent, frequently repeat, and fix the same in thy mind. That is some deep shit. <laughs> Let me start over. Whatsoever thou hast learned, Frequently repeat and fix the same in thy mind, and learn much, but not many things, because a humane understanding cannot be alike capable in all things, unless it be such one that is divinely regenerated. Unto him nothing is so difficult or manifold, which he may not be able equally to attain. That is powerful. Okay, number seven. Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will hear thee, and thou shalt glorify me, saith the Lord. For all ignorance is tribulation of the mind. Therefore call upon the Lord in thy ignorance, and he will hear thee. And remember, thou shalt give honor unto God, and say with the psalmist, not unto us, Lord, but unto thy name, give the glory. And so, you know, when we realize that religion and scripture is not tainted, it's sacred text of the reality in which humanity really exists. Theology is the study of religion, and I think that's where it kind of went off course. Um, because there should not be 500 different religions, because it's really just about the one message. And I don't know about you, but the t first seven things I read in this book pretty much sums up what I'm beginning to learn and see and understand and be channeled myself. Just like so many of you. And so... When we step outside of the light in which things have been shown to us and s stop being angry, like if something creates a, f an, a feeling of anger or fear in you, it's not art it's artificial. And so we can recognize that that artificial physical sensation dri driven from thought is actually a tool for us to go, let me take a look at this because we are not supposed to fear in this human life. It's just a tool. It, it's literally an energetic pull to look at something. And so whenever we can step outside of the spectrum of what we've been shown this whole time and we get down to the ancient text from 1655, um, you know, tons and tons and tons of years before man has been able to change it into what they want it to be. 
we can step outside of it and see the authenticity. <laughs> anyway, I love you to the moon, family. It's wonderful, intense purging energy right now. And we've got another, you know, we've got less than two weeks left in the month of January with an amazing full moon and an amazing eclipse on the 31st which is going to open up a new gateway that starts into February. So January is a rough month. It's getting us, it's shaking the last bit of that stuff off. So just know that that's it. Get in your mind, let it go, and just know that we are the creators in this experience. The co-creators. The co-creators. <laughs>